Good morning. Great to see all of you today. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, where we glorify God by connecting people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. Everybody got a hand? Everybody got a hand? Yeah, yeah, that's good. I like that. All right. Got your name on it? All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. I know you're thinking, what is that all about? Today, we begin a new series called The Hands and Feet of God. And uh, we are the hands and feet of God. And today, during communion, when you come to receive communion, we invite you to just uh, bring, your, uh, bring your hand. You can either just drop it here at the altar through the little uh, rail there, or you can place it here on these uh, on the posts, however you would like. But anyway, we want to invite you to just do that as a commitment to say, yeah, I want to be counted. My name's up there. I'm a hand or a foot of Jesus Christ. And uh, you're going to hear a lot more about that over the next week. Our worship team are going to take all these hands, and they're going to make some kind of a, what do I say, David, a display, uh, dis displaying all the hands of, of God. And so uh, when you come down, just place your hand either here or just, you know, when you kneel, you can just put it through there. I won't walk on it too much, you know, so anyway. It's good to be together. Gosh, uh, we had a great service last week uh, as a, for our Sunday of silence, but there's, uh, it's kind of like coming home at 11 o'clock, and it, it's good. I said that to the 8.30 service this morning early. They were happy, but uh, it's good when we're all together, and, uh, and we're glad to do that. I wanna, last uh, Sunday uh, at our Sunday of silence, Bill and Ann Matz, uh, who are here, joined the church, and that was an exciting day. And we welcome them too. Friends, this is a big day as we celebrate the Holy Sacrament of Communion. And so let's prepare our hearts now to worship the Lord.
Would you please stand and join with me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let God's praise be heard in the midst of the congregation. Shout praise to the Lord of hosts. Let God's praise be whispered in the spirits of the people. We give you thanks for the many ways you have loved and guided us. Let God's praise be proclaimed wherever we are. May we praise God's name in all we do this day. Amen. Remain standing. Our hymn is number 100. pray. Lord of mystery and community, you have called us here today to remind us of the common mission you set before us. Help us pay attention to the words of Jesus as he sent out his disciples on a mission of healing and compassion. Remind us that success is not measured in the cures, but in the striving. Enable us to be true disciples in this world. And as always, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be seated. We certainly welcome you once again to First United Methodist Church, where our vision is that this is a place where lives can be changed, where hurts are healed, hope is restored, and loneliness is relieved, and where everybody feels needed and wanted. And we are glad you're here. Our ushers are coming now to bring the attendance pads, and as they do that, 
Thank you for the information you provide us there. Just uh, jot down your name, let us know you're here, pass it to the person next to you down your row, then pass it all the way back so that you know everybody on your row. While we're doing that, get out your bulletin, a couple of announcements that I'd like to just mention. Uh, first of all, uh, beginning tomorrow at noon, our brown bag Bible study will begin once again. We've kind of taken a little break this summer, but we're going to be back at it tomorrow at noon over in the Todd house. And I want to invite you to bring a sandwich with you and uh, come and join us uh, for that uh, special time. You can read several other announcements there. I want to remind you that Wednesday, um, Wednesday this week, we will continue our conversation on uh, this book called uh, Seven Things West John Wesley Expects Us to Do for Our Kids. We had a great conversation last week, and we hope that you'll join us. Uh, bring your lunch again or your supper at 5.30, uh, and then at 6, we'll start the conversation and we look forward to that. David wanted me to mention too, tonight, the choir rehearsal, six o'clock in the choir room. And also tonight, I just want to tell you about something that's happening this afternoon. Uh, we have an awesome youth group, and you know that. We have several of our youth, though, who have not been baptized and so forth. And so uh, Tanya, Kenner, and I have been sharing with them about baptism. And tonight, uh, we're going to gather uh, here at the church at 4 o'clock and go out to Miss Katie Huckabee's and uh, we're going to invade her backyard. We're not going in her house, we're going to invade her backyard and go down to the Elkhorn Creek and uh, we're going to have a very special service of baptism. And certainly, you know, that's open to, to, to you to come. We'll baptize, I think we have five uh, young people we're going to baptize and then we're going to do an affirmation, a reaffirmation of our baptism and uh, we're just looking forward to that. I want to take just a moment to recognize Reverend Richard Smith, who is our liturgist today. Uh, Richard uh, retired uh, last year from the Memphis Conference. He had an ex a distinguished career with them and the Memphis Conference as a United Methodist pastor. His wife, Pat, is with us. And they have moved uh, to Frankfurt. Um, I don't really know why, but they did. No. <laughs> No, their daughter Leanne, uh, Scott, and uh, their son-in-law Adam is here with their grandchildren. Yeah, that'll do it, right? Their grandchildren, Asher and Grayson, are here and uh, in our church. And we're glad to welcome them. And actually, Pat's going to be joining the church here in a couple weeks or so. Uh, Richard is a United Methodist clergy, just like me, ordained. He's written many books and uh, does a daily blog. And uh, anyway, still very, very active. He's before leaving... Uh, the Memphis area, I guess, is that right? Memphis area, you started an inner city uh, ministry there that's just uh, done a great, made a profound impact on that city. So uh, he'll, you'll be seeing more of Richard and Pat, and uh, we welcome them this day. There's a lot for us to pray about today. Let's join our hearts and let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Loving and holy God, we sense the presence of your Spirit among us. And today we are honored to be able to approach your throne and humble ourselves before you. Loving and holy God, upon us you have opened the windows of heaven and poured your blessing upon us. And we are people who are rich in blessing. And we're people, Lord, who want to share those blessings in response to what you've done for us. And today we recognize how important that response is. Once again, we gather for this holy meal. And what an honor it is to be able to celebrate it as we remember what Jesus Christ did for each of us. We were created for a moment like this where we could remember the sacrifice that Christ made for each. Today, as we pray, Lord, we bring to you from our hearts those that are on our, in, our, in our minds that we have concern about. Some of them are sick. Some are hurting, wounded. 
And loving God as we often do, we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, your healing power will come upon them. Touch those that are in, uh, in rehab. Some of them are uh, doing treatment. Lord, today we stand as witnesses of the healing that you do through those that are gifted in the art of healing. We give thanks for that. We thank you too that you console us when we grieve and our hearts are lifted to you. Loving God, we thank you for the church and we thank you for our sisters and brothers in this place. But we recognize, Lord, that we're the church is much greater than this one little place. We're sisters and brothers with people all over the globe. You unite us, O oh Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Of all walks of life, all lifestyles, all colors, all genders, Lord, we're here. And we're honored to be your children. So today, we lift your name. We lift it upon high. And give thanks that we together are united through Christ and united through the prayer that you taught your own disciples to say, and we say now, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
What a blessing in music. Our hymn is number 732. Let us stand as we sing. feet of God, and I want to begin with two scriptures, the first from 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning at verse 42. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred men? And so Elisha repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He said it before them. They ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 16. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. And what was left over was gathered up, twelve baskets of broken pieces. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. That gospel story is strikingly parallel to the Old Testament story of Elisha feeding the five or the 100 men. In both those stories, a small amount goes a long way to feed the hungry. And over the next few weeks, we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Now, I have said, and members of my family have said, and I've heard some of you say, I'm starving. <laughs> But are we really? You know, I, I dare say that few of us have firsthand experience of the real, of really, really being hungry. And, I, and I'm looking around here. I'm not sure. I don't think any of us in this room remember the bread lines and the soup uh, kitchens and the tin cups held out for food during the Great Depression. But I will ask you right now to take a moment. And think about a time when you were the most hungry that you've ever been. You remember that? Remember that gnawing in your gut? That feeling of being irritable and dull, you know? In our house, you hear someone say once in a while, if I don't get something to eat soon, I'm going to have a headache and be in a bad mood. <laughs> but you know, throughout the Gospels, the image of hungry humanity is a symbol. It vividly summarizes for all uh, to, uh, summarizes all the wants and the needs and the yearnings that we have. And yet here we are in our modern society today, and it's a sad commentary that our basic hunger is revealed not so much in our hunger caused by lack of food, but by rather our ravenous gluttony. I mean, look at the way we eat. Now, we've heard it said, you are what you eat. And I've got to confess, this is another one of those sermons where the preacher is preaching to himself, too, you know. But, you know, overeating often stems 
from our temptation to think, well, you know, food fills my physical void. Well, it ought to fill my spiritual and emotional needs too. I mean, well, look at us. we got our instant oatmeal and our instant potatoes. And we love that instant gratification when we want it right now <laughs> for all those personal needs that we have. And yet, friends, Jesus issued a warning in the parable of the rich farmer who, after accumulating a large amount of wealth, says to himself, Soul, take it easy. You've got plenty of food laid up for you yourself. Just relax. Eat, drink, and be merry. I added those words. And yet, you know, if you read that, Jesus says, if you do that, you're a fool. Jesus says also in, in Luke 12, verse 15, he says, beware of covetousness. Ooh, that's a big churchy word, isn't it? Covetousness. That's even hard to say. But you know, in the Greek, the word covetousness means having too much. Actually, it literally means having too much for our own good. Surely that doesn't apply to us, does it? Yet when we pray, what do we pray for? We pray for our daily bread. How many of you said a moment ago, give us this day our year's rations? I didn't hear anybody say that, right? Jesus said, if you've got enough for a feast, then invite those who don't have anything. Invite the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. My family, you know, we're here on this holy meal, celebrate this communion today. But it's not only about food that I'm talking about. It's about every single gift that you and I have been given by Almighty God. Every single talent that you have. Every single ability that you have that's what we're really talking about today. And because we are the hands and feet of God, it is, our ability to, it is in our ability to be hospitable to one another. Because we are the hands and feet of God, it's in our ability to be encouragers to one another. Because we are the hands and feet of God, it is in our ability to take initiatives and help the downtrodden. Because we are the hands and feet of God. It's in our ability to be generous. Generous with all that we have. But will we use those abilities? You see, friends, the problem is, in our society today, we have become too comfortable. In fact, I have a Dear friend, he says, we're just walking through life fat, dumb, and happy. But when we do that, and we do, when we do that, we become static. We, we don't move the way we know God wants us to, and honestly, the way we want to. And so my family, here's the deal. As we gather around this table today, we ought to be reminded that when, we, when, you, when you get the bread, you're also receiving the love of God. Communion doesn't end here, friends. Some of the ministry teams in our church have been meeting all summer long, envisioning what God is wanting them to do in the next three years or so. And, and it's exciting because, friends, symbolically the bread and the wine are being dispersed all around this community and the world. As the body of Christ, we are to take this bread and this love that we receive and take it into the community and turn it into action. We can't just sit here on the pew and feel good about ourselves and our faith. I'm not beating you up, friends. I'm just telling you, God has great dreams for us. We can't come to this table and just receive this gift of Christ, a gift that, that costs Christ life, and do nothing with it. When we leave this place through these doors, we go into a world that, where we are empowered to take the love of Christ and to give to others really more than we even have. And when we do that, 
the Savior of the world will say, Come, come, O blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. Let's pray together. The challenge, Lord, that you place before us on this communion day is great because we know, we know, there are hungry people outside these walls. There may be some hungry people inside these walls. But you call us to join with you and to use these gifts that you have given to do your kingdom work. Let us never be hesitant to do that, God. And we give you thanks. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to issue an invitation to you. Christ, our Lord, invites to this table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Is that you? All of you? No? Good. So let me invite you now to stand. Let's turn in our hymnals to page 8. And let's confess, if you will, our sin before God and one, an- and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Turn to your neighbors and offer a sign of peace and reconciliation. may be seated. As we continue to respond, our ushers are coming forward. So let's prepare ourselves to offer now our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. God, we thank you for the bountiful gifts of life, for your grace and love which touch our hearts, our spirits, our lives. In this offering, we simply give back to you a portion of that which you've given to us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.
going to ask those that are going to assist me today to come forward. And um, if the congregation would turn to page 17 in your hymnal as we join together for the responses. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your Word and Holy Spirit. And the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs> Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and by your Spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. As we gather around this table today, as always, I remind you that all are invited to this table. This is what we call open communion. If you're a guest with us today, you're welcome here and encouraged to come and receive this. This is the Lord's table. It's not my table, not anybody here. 
But this belongs to Jesus Christ. He gave his all so that you and I could have this moment. So the invitation is simple. Come. We're going to ask the choir to come first, though. And the ushers will give you guidance. Let's uh, bring your hands and set them there. And let's commit ourselves to be the hands and the feet of God. Come. Holy and mighty God, we thank you for your giving to us this special gift and for our ability to receive it. And in that ability, Lord, you move us forward into the world to be your hands and your feet. Go with us now, God. Be with us as we sing. Be with us as you place those that you want us to share the good news of Christ. Connect us, Lord. And we give you the praise and the glory for what you're about to do. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
I invite you to stand with me now. Let's turn in our hymnals as we sing our closing hymn, number 581, verses 1 and 4 of Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. from this place in the knowledge and the, and the affirmation that you are with us. Abide in us, Lord. May your peace, a peace that passes all understanding, may it abide in us that we may be your faithful children now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Take time to greet one another before you go. <laughs>